this is my main live setup. Uh, I call it the suitcase of drone. Uh, it's been, uh, I've been working on it many years and it's taken many different forms, but this is the main uh, performance rig that I have. Um, it's all really based off the Tascam 414. Um, this is like the main hub and mixer. Everything kind of comes into this and everything's outputted through it. Um, the 414 is primarily used for uh, when I'm performing. It's a lot of chords, drones, uh, notes, um, and I will play chord progressions and, and notes and patterns with the sliders. Um, and the tape loops are all being run through uh, reverb and delay uh, through the effects loop. And so these are my main chord patterns. And it's also being run through this little looper. Uh, so I can do some looping on top of my looping. So there's one aspect. So those looping elements, are they, they're not in any way synced, right? No, no so nothing. you these phasing unsynced loops? Nothing synced, there's no clicks, nothing. It's all just kind of everything's smashed together um, and, and like and layered uh, and textured. Um, and then the this four track uh, is reserved for um, it's like some field recordings. There's different notes, uh, sequences, melodies that I have playing, um, and like some like bass parts too. And so and that's being run through a reverb and delay and being run into the uh, 414. So this is all coming into this. Uh, and then there's the effects loops that are um, processing this, uh, these tape loops. And then I also will add uh, the OP1. I'll do little sequences with this and then add them on top of everything else. So. Yeah, so the LP1 has really uh, opened up a lot for me, both performance-wise and recording. Uh, I can do a lot with that for sure. What goes into choosing which reverbs and delays suit which element of the set, which tape machine, or which uh, stylistic mm -hmm. thing you give to each tape machine, be it field recordings or right. the chordal work? Well, I think the for the main chord droney pad parts, um, I shopped around for, I've had a lot of different uh, reverbs and delays in this uh, setup, but I actually settled on this old, um, this uh, Alesis Wedge. It's like a 90s desktop reverb, and it's not small, but I really like the reverb and delay combos uh, that they have inside of it, and I've programmed like my own, I, I don't really change settings that much, it's just kind of one long haul reverb that I really like the way it, it like smears the tape loop and, and makes like whatever is on this sound really thick and like dreamy and there's a lot to be said for those kind of cheaper 90s reverbs. Yeah, yeah, I really I really like them. I think this has been one of the best uh, purchases and reverbs that I've, I've I've used in this. And then like for the other side, I really like to I really um, have been liking this very cheap. It's a uh, Kaleen, Kaline, something, uh, sn snake bite reverb delay. Uh, it's a very cheap, uh, like Chinese reverb pedal. But I like uh, running this, um, running this tape loop into that, and like having like different kind of um, reverb stacked. I think gives it a lot of like um, interesting textures and sounds. And then I use this. This is a, a broken Behringer. Uh, delay, a digital delay pedal that I've okay. rehoused in some cardboard. Uh, right. It's it's very it's not good. It's very cheap, uh, but I really like. Um, Is it the Echo Machine? It's the uh, it's like it's a DD something. It's just like it's not the Echo Machine. It's just like their a digital Basic delay they delay. have. Yeah, but I really I like the way you can scrub through the delay time and like feedback. 
and like get this like weird artifacts and like glitchiness. So I use that one a lot for that. Um, and then also I have this guy, which is a, another old used uh, piece. Uh, it's a Line Six Pocket Pod. Okay. And I remember it, the normal pods. Yeah, the, uh, this one is like an even smaller portable version. It it came with like a belt clip, and you could like. <laughs> like rock out uh like walking around um but i really like well i really like how small it is but just the um like clean amp modeling of it i really enjoy and i run my guitar pedal board and guitar through this and run the guitar into the task cam there's a lot to be said for I think loops and synths and everything else through guitar amps or modelers. Yeah. There's just this tonal thing that it's not an EQ, it's not just drive, it's the whole yeah. physicality of the amp sound, even though it's a model. It's I know, it's it's very interesting too, because people are like, oh, I like your guitar sound, like, where do you get it? It's like from this <laughs> Pocket Pod Express uh, from the 90s. Uh, it's it's uh, Many people threw them out. I, I, still, I still use them. Um, but it works in this setup. Um, and especially like having like going like an ampless setup and, and playing live and I can just bring this and my pedal board and my guitar and play uh, everything. Yeah. And speaking of which, let's take a look at the pedal board. Yeah. So the first thing I was curious about is what goes into putting the pedal board together? Is there a key element that's really important that's based around? Is it sheer experimentations led to this these pedals in these order? Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it was a lot of experimentation that led to this order. Um, obviously, I think the reverb, delay, and loopers are uh, the most important part that um, I use for my setup. Um, and other things have been like functionally placed in there like I wanted to play more bass parts so or have more low end so I got like a octave type pedal that does a, a pitch shifting or I needed uh, some more distorted parts so I got a couple distortion pedals but a lot of it is just reverb delays and looper pedals and I did experiment a lot with the order of them and like the way I wanted um, m the stacking of loops to go so uh, it's kind of like a funny order, but it works for um, how I perform with it. Yeah, I have a thing in my live case modular setup at the minute, this pre and post effects, and it's a stereo filter slap bang in the middle. Mm -hmm. And I like this idea of I can filter down my reverb and delay trails. Yeah, yeah. Or I can have trails that are affected by the filter sweeps that happen before them. Yeah. So it leads to having, as you do in the pedal board, mm -hmm. you know, the looper points, I guess, are kind of like my filter point in the case. You want to loop some of the things with the effect you want the effects right. to react to the loops yeah exactly so i have like um so for example like one of my i first come out of the volume pedal which is very important for all the swells that i do um that's like the initial looper that it hits uh but then within that you know it's going to um the pitchfork uh for bass sounds it runs into the distortion pedal so i can get distorted bass uh, and then it runs into another, this reverb pedal, and then this modulation pedal, uh, this um, Digitech delay, this analog delay, and then into another looper, uh, into the boss delay, and then this Strymon reverb. But like, I like having the, the, the loops separated, the loop pedals, um, because I, I like stacking the loops. Um, so if, say, I do something like Let's just do something quick here, like, like something quick. Uh, having this loop go, and then being, I can add an effect in between this loop, and that's a reverse delay, and then I can stack this loop on top of this one and have that first loop going while adding a totally different part, and then it gets this like sonic texture that just kind of weaves these two out of sync loops into each other so we've got much like the suitcase setup for the tape as well out of phase loops all yeah. kind of just phasing yeah, looping just building layers together, like just having like uh, a lot of uh just 
mayhem of sorts. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's just all uh, just stacked and crammed against each other. So, with that in mind, mm-hmm. and I think I know the answer. Does anything go into certainly in a live set changing delay times ever, or is it a very much this is the reverse? It will do this thing. Yeah, this is the, the faster one. This is the longer think, one. Yeah, I think the the reverse comes on and off. I'll adjust the revert the reverse time of that one sometimes. This one, the analog, it just kind of stays on all the time. Um, this one is used for like a lot of transitions. Like so, say I'm going from the, this loop setup back to my suitcase. I'll turn on this guy, and then this is the DD6, I believe, or DD5. It has a a swell delay function, which I'll just like build that and let it like be able to turn off the loop pedals and have that just transition for me without, you know, with, with just being seamless with that. And then I can just like move on to the next song. <laughs> 